problem with the Confederate Army was we marched so quick, so fast, we didn't have a lot of baggage trains to bring things up. So if a federal guy dropped his gear, he had it well, well um, labeled. The wagon trains would come by, pick it up, put it in the bag, organize it, put it back, and once the Army got stopped in bivouac, they would hand the stuff back out again. Now the Confederates weren't so lucky. Once you dropped it, you lost it. A lot of times Richmond didn't have anything to send you. Your state didn't have anything to send you. You might would write home and ask mama to make you one, if, if possible, if there was even enough supplies. So what, what developed was the bedroll. Got your blanket. A lot of your personal belongings were wrapped up in your blanket. And so, for example, like mine, I've got my shelter half. and a rubber blanket in here for in case it were to rain. You can just take it when rolled properly. You can just unroll it like that. You got a piece of canvas. This is called a shelter hat. You can tell it's been used too. It's got holes there. What you do is you, me and my messmate, would take them and you would, I uh, heard the term button up. The weather, you're gonna button up. You button your two sh shelter hats together. Put it on a string, take your bayonet, put it on your musket, shove it in the ground, tie a string between the two muskets, put the shelter, put the two halves over the string and, and make a, a, a frame pup tent, basically. Then you would, then you and your buddy, your messmate would share it. So needless to say, you would have to be pretty friendly sometimes. So, other than that, like when it's hot today or this evening, basically got a gum blanket, which is one side canvas, one side rubber. This is good for rain or just on a dewy night, dewy morning, keep the dew off of you. It's also got grommets, so it can easily be strung up between two trees for shelter there again. This one actually has a slit. poncho. So every piece of gear has, has a use and a purpose. Because you don't really want to be carrying anything that you don't that you don't use because any excess weight would just slow you down on the march. And you have your canteen, which you filled up out of a mud hole mostly. You keep your rations here. Your blanket. They didn't have much rations. They did do split. Your bayonet, the most common use for the bayonet with a candle holder. Or they would take the end of it, hook it, use it to drag dead bodies back for a body recovery. Very rarely did combat come down to the use of the bayonet. A lot of times, a lot of times when they see a bayonet charge, their lines would break because nobody really wants to get, get stabbed with the bayonet. You can also dig with it. We carry in our haversacks rations, corn. If we had a fire, if we had some meat. Another use Sometimes if you're lucky, a spit. got a little bit of bacon. Yeah. And there is a potato in here somewhere. I, I got some cheese. I understand from using this, you ladies, with, with purses, how everything's always in the bottom of that sucker. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what you would cook yeah, on, what you would cook on is a canteen half. It's basically a canteen split in half. Works good for a plate. You can also put your bacon, get you a little bit of grease in here, sit on the fire. After you cook your bacon, you use your cornmeal or whatever. You make uh, Johnny cakes or anything like that. I, uh, I have a piece of leather here. There's the tater. Piece of leather to pick it up out of the hot fire. Put it back because, as Private Lynch learned this morning, things get hot really quick. Um, pretty much keep everything in here. I've got my Bible, my New Testament, pencil to write home with, and the soldier's best friend, the drill manual. So, everything you got with you. It's carried on your back, and like I said, uh, 
Can't go wrong without this. Spare pair of socks. Which can come in quite handy. Oh. Your footwear is not, not the best or oh. no footwear at all. I run across uh, a good Sutler tinsmith. Made me a tool. So I can get my get my canteen off the fire and use it to cook. We've also got, I've got everything from, from steaks so that we can do our shelter half down, rope. So by the time you get done with this, this is usually probably about eight pounds. You got a 10 pound musket. You got another two or three pounds, probably five with your bedroll, you canvas. And so by the time you finish, you're about 25 to 30 pounds carrying. Um, we like to, we do marches, four, five, six, eight miles at a time. We like to sleep and um, try to get in as immersed, immersed as possible into what it was like to be a Civil War soldier at times, especially a Confederate soldier um, basically being deprived of a lot of the amenities that these guys were lucky to have or the things that you would be missing from home. The one thing I do not have in here that I would like to get is a tin type of my sweetheart from back home. But I was, I'm lucky enough to have a haversack, but if you didn't have a haversack there again, if you lost it, see it's whole, uh, this thing's been patched up repeatedly. You have lost a lot of things. Um, you can wrap it up in your bedroll, so show them how you While he's doing that, this is a good demonstration of maybe a rotisserie. Yeah. You can cook off your bayonet, I mean off your ramrod. Take that, run a squirrel on it, possum, potato, anything like that, any kind of meat, anything. Lay it across the fire, turn it slowly as you need to, and cook over it. So most of the stuff that you have has a multiple use. Not, it's not just for one thing. And a lot of it came from the soldier's ingenuity of just coming up with, with the need to have something and the need to get it done. This soldier, again, is very well equipped. And you can see, even this, you can see how heavy that is. Yeah, see, yeah. you know. Yeah, see, yeah. see how heavy that is. Yeah. Every now and then you'll get people with a knapsack and they'll have foam rubber in there to make it look nice and fat <laughs> and full. See, how'd you like to carry that for about 20 miles? <laughs> yeah. See. So by the time you get by the time you get all this on, bedroll and everything, like I said, you're you're good 30 pounds easy with your musket. Hot day like this, sweating, you know, uh, it's just, we stay hydrated for sure. But I, I've been to some events where there was some, a lot of marching and stuff. I lost five or six pounds over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Our muskets, I have a British imported musket. It's an Enfield, it's 1853. Infield. It, was, it was imported from England because the Confederacy there again had a hard time getting supplies, so this had to get through the blockade. We uh, this where's your spring from? Your rich one. This was a common. This is a common uh, northern weapon, Springfield. These were actually a bunch of these were captured at Harper's Ferry, sent to Richmond, changed a little bit, and they'll have a. They actually have a CSA, and you can see Richmond on the lock plate printed in there. And uh, these are noticeably heavier than these. Can't really tell you why, but I'll, I'd rather carry an infield any day. I think they fire better. Mine, mine right here, after about 10 shots, fouls all the time. Just from a simple design, the powder comes down and has to make a curve right here where the nipple is. That's Cushion cap comes down, ignites the powder, sends the bullet out. As you can tell, this is this is more straight. Doesn't quite make that J. Now we got the bedroll. See now, now we got our bedroll. 
with everything all the in stuff it. That you saw in the Dominoes, Bible, cheese, cheese. Uh, got your got your knife and Painful fork and everything. So, so he's set to go. Um, and like I said, it was all it was all geared from necessity, just how to keep your stuff and from losing your stuff. Because as a Confederate, you had a really hard time replacing anything that you lost because mostly homespun. A lot of your clothing was homespun. Like for instance, this shirt. The shirt I'm wearing is like a pieces cloth shirt. It's like I wrote home. I'd lost my shirt or it had gotten damaged and the ladies at home didn't have enough fabric to make one piece of fabric to make a solid piece a solid shirt so they patch take different fabrics and patch and make and make a shirt for me and it's it's real this is really nice thin cotton but it's still still really hot you'd be surprised they were a lot there was no air conditioning back then so it didn't really bother them that much they were a lot. They were a lot more hardened off to the heat and to the elements than we are today. You know, thank, thank God for AC, right? <laughs> <laughs> if there's any questions, feel free to ask. My name's uh, I'm Brian Henderson. I'm first sergeant of the 28th North Carolina. This is Private Sam Lynch. This is Private Justin Wall. And we um, we just sort of as a group had just decided to start doing it this way. To just to pay more homage to the soldier and what they went through. So we sleep in the rain sometimes. I mean, we've, we've gone through major storms, snow. You know, sometimes it, one thing that does not cooperate with all these things is the weather. Any questions? Huh? I'll show them. I got something. Yeah. The best thing to start a fire with naturally is a pine knot. You can get a sappy pine knot with the sap running out of it. It's, it's very flat. But However, if you have uh, just an empty tin right here, you put any cloth in there. You have to... oh. Yeah, we leave the fire to Sam. Sam's an excellent fire boy. <laughs> Did you take it down the line, sir? Yeah. It's basically carbonized fabric. Like charcoal, basic carbon. You and what is it? A you can take any kind of fabric, you shake it up in there, and you get the carbon all over it, and it'll it'll burn really hot. Well, what you it do? don't really burn hot; it's just, it's just hot, yeah, it, really hot to the touch. Right. You can put leaves and and mold. But how would you anything. spark it? A little small. Well, even matches. Strike all oh, matches oh, or you a flint. Have matches, right? Yeah. Strike yeah, they had here. they had they did have matches back then. It was typically called lucifers. And did they have rubber back then? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they had they had rubber. Back rubber, back rubber, rubber things yeah. were actually rubberized yeah. by the Goodyear Tire Company. Yeah, huh. they sure so were. They were they were in existence. They were good. Contracts in the early war, both the North and the South. <coughs> if there's not any more questions, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.